As your Python apps become more complicated, you'll need a task queue. Celery is probably the most popular task queue in Python, and in this video, I'll show you how to get started with it. What is a task queue? A task queue is a way for you to offload time-intensive, processing-intensive, or unreliable tasks to a separate process so your main process doesn't get blocked. Let me show you how easy it is to use. Okay, so to get started with Celery, I need to install it. So I have a virtual environment set up already, so I'll just install it with pip. So pip install Celery. And then also I need to install a driver for the task queue or the broker that I'll be using. So the idea behind the task queue is my Python app will send a message to the task queue and then Celery will be listening to the task queue to figure out what it needs to run. So for my task queue, I'm going to use something called Redis, and Redis is an in-memory database store. So this install here in pip is for the driver, so for Python to connect to it, but I need the actual Redis instance, so I'm going to use Docker Compose to create it. So if you're not familiar with Docker, it's just a way of creating things called containers that basically run one thing. So I'm gonna create a container that runs one thing and that one thing is Redis. I'm gonna create another container that runs something called Redis Commander. Redis Commander is just a tool that allows me to look inside of a Redis instance so we can visually see what's going on and I'll show you that a little later in the video. But the point is here, I have Redis on port 6379 and my Celery app will be able to connect to that. So let me go ahead and start it. I can just do docker compose up dash D. I have docker desktop installed, so that's why I can just do docker compose up dash D. If you had docker desktop installed and you have this file, then you can just run the same command and then Redis is gonna be running on your computer. It's that simple. So let me close this and let me go to tasks.py. And what I'll do is I'll import from Celery capital C Celery. So Celery class is being imported from the Celery library. And what I wanna do is I wanna create something called a Celery app. So the Celery app is just me defining like how Celery is going to work in this particular instance. So the first argument's gonna be the name of the Celery instance. I'm gonna call it tasks to match the name of my file. It just makes it a lot easier if it matches the name of the file here. In a more complicated setup, you can use a different name, but in my case, I'm just gonna make it name of the file and then I need to pass in a broker so the broker is going to be Redis and I need to pass in basically like a URL for it so this starts off with Redis and then colon slash slash and then the location of it so it's gonna be localhost and then 6379 because it's running on my computer I could have this running on some remote server then I would just need a different uh, location for it but because it's on my local machine I can say it's running on localhost so once I have that, then I can define a Celery task. So to define a Celery task in this case, I can take the app object here, make it a decorator, so put the at sign in front of it, and then do dot task. And then what follows is a function that will act as a task inside of Celery. So I'll be able to run this function through Celery instead of my task.py here. And I'll show you both cases in just a second, but let me create this task first. So I'll call it process. It's gonna take in two values. And what I want to do is I want to make this sleep to kind of simulate a slow running process. So I'll say from time import sleep. And inside of here, I'll sleep for one second. Actually, I'll do that inside of a loop. So let's say while uh, some counter is less than five, I'll sleep for one second and I'll initialize the counter here as zero and I'll increment the counter and then I'll print like processing. So we can visually see something happening. And then at the end, I'll just return, let's say X squared plus Y squared, right? So first let me run this as a regular function. So I'll do Python dash I and then tasks.py. And then I'll just call process with two and three. So I'm running it and we see here, uh, it's printing processing and then it's eventually gonna return. So we see there it returns 13. So imagine this were in a web app, for example, and the user clicked on a link. You wouldn't want this process to be running to generate the page because the user would sit there and have to wait. So what you can do is you can offload this work to Celery and then you can return a response to the user immediately. So let me exit out of this and let me start up Celery. So I have this other terminal open. It's bigger here so we can see everything that's running. So what I need to do is I need to start Celery so I can use the Celery command. So Celery and then dash A, and then the name of the file with the Celery app in it, so tasks. And then I need 
to do worker, which says I'm going to create a celery worker from tasks.py. And then I want to add some logging. So I'll do dash L and then I'll do info as the logging level so I can see everything. And I'll hit enter. And now what I see is all this information about my celery instance. But what's important here is the transport. So the transport here is Redis and then localhost 6379. So that's exactly what I set up. And then here are the tasks that I have set up. So I only have one task because I decorate it process with app.task. So Celery has it available. So you have to be able to see the task here before you can run it. So now let me scroll down to the bottom. So we see nothing is happening with Celery. So let me start up the Python REPL again. And just to recap, if I do process like this, it still processes in the same location. So it's processing in this REPL here. But if I want to run it in the background, what I can do is I can do process.delay and then pass in the same argument. So it's the same, same function name, same arguments, but I'm just putting a dot delay after the function name, and then I hit enter. Then what we see here is I get an async result, and if you notice here in the Celery terminal, it's now doing some work. So we see here it's printing out the processing, and then it tells me what the result is, 13, and then it tells me it took about five seconds to run that because I have to sleep for five seconds. So if this were like a real app, this Celery process would be running somewhere else and it will just be waiting for any tasks to appear on the queue. It will take those tasks and run them for you and then do whatever needs to be done. So in this case, it's just returning 13. But of course, you can do things like send emails, you can add something to a database, you can process some files, whatever it is. Um, normally things that take a while that would block uh, the typical user using your app, you can have those run in Celery so the user doesn't have to worry about waiting for those things to complete. So now let me open up Redis Commander. So remember it's running on 8081. So I'll go to my browser here and I'll go to localhost 8081. Okay, so we see here, this is my Redis instance and it has some things for Celery here that I don't have to worry about. What I'm more concerned with are the tasks that are available here. So because this runs so quickly, I won't be able to see anything in Redis Commander. But if I save the result of the task to Redis, then I'll be able to see it in Redis Commander. So normally when you run it like this, where you just have a broker, you're gonna put the task on the queue and then Celery will run the task and then basically forgets about it. So it would depend on your process or whatever the task is, doing some work that has some kind of effect. If you just do something like this where you return a value, then this value is gonna be lost forever because there's nothing that's holding on to it. So what I can do is I can set up something called a backend and that's just the location where it saves the results. And I can actually save the results to Redis as well which is the most convenient in this situation. And then let me just restart this and let me restart Celery since I updated the backend. So control C and then I'll just run the command again. And now we see results here also has Redis localhost. So back here in my REPL at the bottom, I'll call process.delay again with two and three and hit enter. So we get this async result here and then we see processing. And if I go over to Redis commander and refresh, we see this celery task meta here, and we see status success, result 13, and then some other information. So this task was able to run successfully. If it had failed, it would say like failure. Um, if it were pending, it would say pending. And then if it had any other status, it would say that. But since this is success, it has a result 13. So now let me go back here and it's nice to have the results stored in Redis, but what if I wanna use it somewhere in my app? So what I can do is I can get that. So there are a couple ways I can get it. So first, let me show you how I can do it here. I can do process.delay, and then I can do result.get, right? So this is waiting, and it's waiting, and then once everything finishes up here, it returns 13. But if I do it again, result.get, we see it returns 13 immediately. Because in the first case, it was waiting for the Celery task to finish running. But in the second case, because it's already done and it's successful, I can immediately return the value. But notice that if I call .get this way, it basically goes back to the original version where I had to wait. Well, I don't wanna have to wait. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to get the results of something that has run before. So what I can do is let me, let me just run process delay with like five and two. 
so I get a different result, right? And we see I get this ID, so I'm gonna copy this ID, and just to show you this is working, I'm gonna exit completely out of here, and then I'm gonna go back into task with the REPL, and then what I can do is I can do result equals, and then I take the process task, the function, and instead of delay or anything like that, I'm gonna do async result. And then I'm gonna pass the ID that I copied as a string. And now I have results. And I can do things like dot ready. It says true if I do dot ready. If I do dot status, it tells me success. And if I want the results, I get 29. And the reason why I can do this is because it is stored in Redis. If I refresh, we see a couple more. Here's the task that I just got the result for. We see the result is 29 here and it's success. So this is the basic process with Celery. As you can see, the Celery part is pretty simple to set up. Really what matters is what your task is because that's where the work is. And of course that depends on what your project is, what you need to be run in the background. But for Celery itself, you can see it's pretty easy to set up. You just set up a broker, a backend, and then you'll be able to run any task that you define. I can define as many tasks as I need and I can run them in the background in my project whenever it's necessary. So that was enough to get you started with Celery by itself, but Celery really shines when you use it with a web framework like Flask or Django. Check out the other videos on my channel to learn how to use Celery with those frameworks.